Howdy. Meow, meow, meow. Another one? Wow, I didn't expect the first cat tier video to inadvertently be advertising for more cat tier requests. But hey, who am I to refuse free money, right? What's the request? Ikidna, in Deltarune? Ah, we're gonna have to go into the unused monster code for that one. Before we get started, spoilers for Undertale in Deltarune. Don't hassle people for using text-to-speech, and be nice to your fellow theorists when you disagree in the comments. Around this time last year, I did a video that I titled, Goner Code, in which I discussed a bunch of very creepy messages found within the game's code, alluding to some unknown entity trapped within the darkness. Although inaccessible without hacking tools, Spamptin himself actually reads some of this code out loud when you ask him about fear, before suddenly snapping back to normal, and claiming that he didn't hear anything, before suggesting that, whoever they were, they sounded like they were talking to us. There's also a bunch of very creepy unused error handler text, which together reads like a very ominous sounding poem, but I also covered that in the Memory Heads video so, you know, if you want to recap, go ahead and click the doobly doo. But, there is still one very creepy line I missed, and that is because this one is hidden, not as a placeholder message, but in the enemy data for a very specific unused enemy. Not Gaster. This enemy uses ID slot number 1, but can take many forms as a result of various scripts overriding their data. Because they all share the same ID number, recruiting any one of them will give you the data for known quantity 1, with a randomized sprite, much like when we recruited Spamton in that Goner Code video. In battle, they use the default sprite, which is Rudin Sprite, and, for some reason, they can give you negative tension points when you graze their bullets and... Um, that's, that's pretty weird. I have no idea why it does that. If you've ever spawned into the debug room in Chapter 2, you've likely fought this thing in its basic enemy form. In this state, the X will freeze the game, and thus the only way to recruit it is to spare it over and over again, until it eventually accepts your mercy on turn 11. Hey future me here. Apparently, Simu Dance doesn't actually freeze the game, and provides another valid way to spare these guys. If you battle it alongside other, actual enemies, it can shuffle or copy their scripts in a way that's similar to some of the missing nose in the first generation of Pokemon, and thus it becomes much easier to act, and therefore recruit it. But, it's pretty normal to have unused placeholder enemies in games, so why should we care? Well, if you disable a little bit of the script here, you can actually encounter another version of this monster, named Echidna. No, not that kind. In Greek mythology, Echidna was a snake-like monster, living in the darkness of a cave, who gave birth to a multitude of monsters, earning her the title, Mother of Monsters. This is actually a pretty fitting name then, since as the placeholder code, she essentially acts like a parent object, which is later overridden by new monsters as Toby creates them. So in a weird sort of way, you could say she is the mother of monsters in Deltarune 2. To Homestuck fans, Echidna is the denizen of the space aspect, the aspect concerned with the creation and manipulation of the fabric of reality, which makes sense thematically, as that's basically the role she's serving in the code too. Something I find to be pretty weird, is just how little of the original Greek Echidna survived over the ages, as very little was actually written about her, aside from the mother of monsters thing. And most unusually, there are no surviving depictions of her appearance from that time period, which basically means all the art you see of her today is essentially fan art. Yes, even this is fan art. I'm not trying to suggest that this is why she doesn't have a real sprite in game or anything, I just think that's kind of neat. She's also a moon orbiting around the celestial body of Typhon, but that's basically the standard for Greek mythology at this point, so I'm not gonna worry about that. What is weird, is how hard it is to recruit her, since most acts will freeze the game, there is no spare threshold, and at 20 HP, most characters will kill her instantly with just one hit. Unless, maybe if we use Noel? Yep, there we go. Finally, a real use for that absurdly low attack stat. Gosh darn it passed me just use Simu Dance. It works on Echidna too. I know what you're thinking, the act script is probably broken because we're fighting this monster in Chapter 2, but what if we were to load this fight in Chapter 1? Would we be able to use Axe or learn more about her? Well let's see, I'll just tweak this encounter here, and...
Oh, not gonna lie, I did not realize that would happen. Well then, a very interesting monster to be sure. This variant is known as G-Body, and it has been theorized that this thing may be related to Gaster, as its name is written in all caps, just like Gaster's dialogue, and like the various device scripts, which are theorized to be related due to file names, motifs, and other shenanigans that were already covered by Misty Sparkles' video, which is awesome, and you should totally check out. Anyway, the name, G-Body, is eerily similar to the names of the Goner body parts found in the game folders, which are labeled, Image Goner Head, Image Goner Legs, and, of course, Image Goner Body. Wait, does that mean Image Friend and the Game Over screen from Chapter 1 are also related to Gaster? Huh. Now, I know what you're thinking, if this is G-Body, does that mean this is Gaster's vessel? If you fight it, does it have Gaster's stats? To which I say, Thank god it doesn't, because Gaster's stats are an absolute nightmare. Let me show you why. If we override a normal monster's data with Gaster's stats, the first thing you will notice is that his attack is a bit high. Like, it's over 66,000 high. Like I'm wearing the best armor, with debug mode on, so I can raise my HP far, far above the normal limit, and even with all of that, I still die immediately the moment a bullet hits me. Wait, did it just delete the soul sprite? Um, I have no idea why that's happening, but I choose to believe it's probably not intentional. Probably? The next thing you might notice is that his defense is also just a bit high. So high in fact that not only will your attacks not do damage, but they'll actually cause his HP to grow even higher every time you try to land a hit. A bit like the amalgamates, which might actually be why this happens. Maybe the amalgamates are meant to reference some of the weird bugs Toby encountered when creating this game. Who knows? What I do know is, he definitely doesn't need that much defense, because his HP is even higher than either of those. Sitting at 600, 66,666. Are you noticing a pattern yet? With that much HP, he would take thousands of turns to kill, even if his defense were literally zero. So if we're intended to fight this guy in Deltarune, then let's just say that these stats for the big one had better be the real stats once it's repaired, or we're going to be fighting this guy forever. But, is it even worth it? Surely a boss this tough has got to at least give a really good reward, right? Um, did, did he just steal 6,000 gold from me? I wonder if the shopkeepers accept negative money. Nope. That checks out. Okay, but he also gave us negative 6000 EXP, so surely that's gotta be useful, right? If EXP is execution points, then does this cleanse us of our sins, freeing us from the burden of our sadistic decisions, and restore us back onto the good route? Surprisingly no, actually. Gaining negative EXP does not reduce your level, nor does it prevent you from entering a genocide run, as that is determined by number of kills in each area. You might be thinking that maybe you can just kill Gaster before you kill some monsters, since, in theory, this would prevent you from leveling up, but shockingly, that actually won't work either. The pacifist run doesn't just check if you have EXP or love, it checks if you've ever killed a monster at all. So if you were hoping to be above consequences by slaying a demon, then, I'm sorry. The only thing to do now is reflect and, maybe, own up to your mistakes, you know? Try to come to terms with why you made them, and make a commitment going forward to try to make amends, and, not shy away from the uneasiness of your own flaws. Um, speaking of. I believe I owe you all an apology, for a critical mistake I made during the egg video. I've been feeling a bit rushed lately, and when you're trying to rush through the editing process, sometimes you make really stupid mistakes. In this case, what happened was, I was trying to illustrate the fun events in Undertale, but all of my footage and memories of the events were over a year old, so they were both quite fuzzy, and my attempts to quickly grab newer footage led to me accidentally implying that you can trigger this event by just walking back and forth in this hallway in rapid succession. In reality, whenever you attempt to trigger a fun event, the game actually resets your fun value to zero. And in order to try again, you have to close the game, manually edit the value back, reload, etc. 
I promise this wasn't me hatching some elaborate Machiavellian scheme to mislead you all. I'm actually just an idiot sometimes, especially when I've been editing for hours and am in dire need of a break. So, um, do still call me out when I'm wrong because I don't want to be worshipped, okay? I make mistakes, just, you know, try not to assume I'm making them on purpose, okay? Special thanks to Space Corps for help funding and researching today's video. That said, um, don't feel pressured to back at Katir if you don't have any ideas yet. I'm not a game review channel or even a theory review channel. Katir just lets you pick a topic where I end up going with it will almost certainly not be where you expect and I don't want you guys to feel pressured to break out the big bucks to support me. If you have to drop a pledge or all you can do is tune in, I appreciate whatever enthusiasm you have to give, you know? Thank you as always to my editor, Molly, as well as Gibby, who returned once again to do the voice of G-Body. And finally, thank you to Ever Rude for doing the voice of Spampton in the ad read you're about to watch. You can check out their stuff using the links in the description below. Hey, hey every it's your old pal Spampton! Back at it again with a holiday special! It's the most wonderful time to completely show up by pitching the crappiest merch you have ever seen! Warning, these designs have neither been tested or approved by the respective handlers and will not be held responsible for any unexpected side of it, such as... Be amazed by colors that look good on paper but are completely butchered when printed on random mugs and apparel. Just the street marks and Ripping. images as the mouse printer tries desperately to interpret the inscrutable instructions given to it. Yowie wowie! Why have we pulled any of these off the shelves? These are absolute sh <laughs> thrown together with little care at all. As for every 30 Roma. you spend on a low quality holiday hoodie, we get a measly 10 whole cents. With each sale, these deals are so good I'm <laughs> myself. What's that? You wanna make a refund? No problem, you little worm! Just scan this conveniently low red QR code that'll sometimes come with your purchase in the mail. Act now! Before we're all sold out! Because these are... So... Awful! Oh, God! <sighs> I'm so sorry. Don't actually buy these. Save your money. Y you know what? I'm done! I'm done! I'm through being a marketing tool for so much lousy advertisement! I can do better than this! Somebody get my agent! I hear there's a lawyer in Albuquerque who could use a new email guy! If anyone has any suggestions for merch production sites, hit me up in the comments below I guess? Same for if you can code a way to link speech to text with text to speech, cause my my last one died, and people really did not like the replacement speech to text to speech. I'll pay you to code a solution, okay? Just type sassafras so your comment doesn't get buried. Until next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more hyperlink blocked.